Okay, so my girlfriend and I were talking about this the other day, and I thought I'd share it with you guys. By the way, hi! No, I'm not dead. I've just been fucking waiting it out to see if the algorithm resets, because all of my videos were getting zero views after the fucking first day. Here's hoping this helps. Anyway, on to what I was talking about. So Scarlet is under the impression that mind reading is a completely overpowered superpower. Specifically the ability to read, like, super specific thoughts. This came up because we were watching Kenobi and there was a scene where Rhea reached into some dude's mind to find out where Kenobi was. And she didn't just get a vibe of how to get there, she found out the exact building. And you know what, when mind reading is portrayed like that, yeah, I, I'm kind of on her side. That does seem a little overpowered. However, I am a card-carrying professional asshole and I wanted to think a little bit harder about this. Which resulted in the rabbit hole of, do you have any fucking idea how hard mind reading would be in the real world? Let's start with the easiest first step first. It's the ability to hone in on one specific person and read their thoughts. One very consistent thing shown with the power to read people's minds in fiction is usually the fact that it's loud as fuck. But hey, let's say you figure that part out. Let's get to the next step. The next step would be trying to find the thought you're trying to read. Human beings experience time linearly, so there's a lot of thoughts between the thought you're trying to find and the thought that they're having at the exact moment you're reading their mind. Meaning you would most likely have to backtrack through all of their thoughts up until the point that they had the thought you're trying to find. And even if you had some way to brute force your way through somebody's memories to find the specific thought that you're trying to access, human beings experience so much mentally and your brain controls so much that that would be one of the hardest fucking processes to do Period. Which brings me to my favorite point, not all humans think in words. Some people, like myself, don't have an internal monologue and therefore only see images or just kind of feel the vibe. Like me, for example, I don't see the image of an apple when I think apple and I don't hear the word apple or hear somebody describing an apple. I just get the vibe of an apple. It's why I really have to draw things out to understand them is because I can't fully envision something in my head. Sure, I can visualize a thing here or there, but it's not like I can close my eyes and actually see the thing. Same with reading. I don't hear words when I read. I just understand what is being told to me. So can you imagine trying to read my thoughts for where a building is? Are you gonna backtrack to the first time that I tried to memorize it where I'm just fucking saying it to myself over and over so I can repeat it on muscle memory? That's gonna fucking take some time, bro! And can you imagine experiencing someone else's thoughts if they don't think in the same way that you do? What if you grow up your entire life without an internal monologue, you read someone's thoughts and they have one? Or you don't have the ability to picture things in your mind and you read a visual learner's mind and all of a sudden you have the images popping up. So you know what? I don't actually think that mind reading is a way overpowered superpower. I think it's one of the hardest superpowers to control. I don't know. Let me know you guys' opinion. Comments are open. Hit me up. Are you with me or Scarlet on this one? Oh my god, you fucking traitor! Oh come on, Jason, it's not that bad. Not that bad? I can't believe I even trusted you! Jason, seriously, this changes nothing. This changes absolutely everything! Hey, guys, uh... What's going on? I heard I heard some yelling. What's going on is that Stephanie has no fucking loyalty. Listen to him. He's overreacting. All right, uh, J Jason, what 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 happened? What's going on? I'm overreacting. All right, okay, I'm overreacting. I walked in here, and you want to know what I heard her listening to? No. Tupac. <gasps> Gotta be not you two. This is a serious offense, Stephanie. We are the three Gotham natives in this house. We are East Side till we die. Absolutely. Then we're even east side after that. Hell yeah. I have as much hometown pride as either of you, but come on, seriously, it's just music. Did you just say it's just music? Holy shit, do not fuck around and make me give you the Tim Drake special, Stephanie! Oh, I'm sorry, what's that? I, I vaguely heard my name. Is something happening? Don't worry about it, Jason's just making a veiled threat that he's gonna stab me in the chest with a batarang and then tag the walls with my blood. Oh shit, is it Thursday already? And what are you listening to? I need to make sure that everybody else in this house isn't a traitor! Biggie. Big Papa, actually. Gotham Pride, go Knights. Ha! Ha ha! I fucking knew it! Damn straight. Tim, I have lived with you. I know for a goddamn fact you were playing 12 hours of brown noise over there. Okay, first of all, how dare you? I swear, you are all children. Why won't you listen to something that'll actually help you later than life, like Beethoven or Mozart? Shut the fuck up, Grandpa. Nobody asked your Benjamin Button ass. The fuck do you know what Benjamin Button is? You didn't catch me up on all the movies that I missed while I was dead. You started with Benjamin Button? Thought he could relate to sounding like a 45-year-old when he was 20. Yeah. 
Hey! Guys, guys, can we calm down? Everyone has different music tastes. That's perfectly okay. Oh, of course you'd fucking say that, Richard. I watched you train for 30 fucking minutes yesterday listening to the clean version of the Top 40 playlist. It is a curated playlist. I didn't create it, and pop is super easy to do gymnastics move to. I didn't fucking pick the clean version! Okay, I want to I want to weigh in on this. So there have been various rumors as of late that James Gunn might be working on a Lobo project with Jason Momoa. Given it's all rumors, it's based off of one Mastodon post that that James Gunn made and a couple of comments from Jason Momoa that are a little suspect. I have made it very apparent in the past what my feelings are on Jason Momoa being cast as Lobo and that is that that is the best casting decision of all fucking time and I don't care if he is Aquaman. You're gonna have him in two movies. Are you going to deny a Lobo movie because Jason Momoa is Aquaman? Is, is that canon that important to you? I can accept Mahershala Ali both being Cottonmouth and Blade. I can accept Aquaman also being Lobo. I can accept Ben Affleck and Robert Pattinson both equally being Batman at the same time. I can see Aquaman as Lobo. Don't you dare take this away from me. I want this so bad. Listen, listen, it, is it even confirmed in the slightest? No. Is there a potential that Jason Momoa would just be like producing it and someone else would be in, in the starring role? Absolutely. But I mean like fucking come on would be a casting decision on par with Henry Cavill as Superman. Both giant, buff, charming nerds occupying roles that look exactly the fuck like them. Jason Momoa would do a great job as Aquaman. Absolutely, you don't need to take him away from being Aquaman. Hell, I'd be okay if there were no manneristic differences between Aquaman and Lobo. They never need to meet. That would be perfectly okay. Just get, give me a Lobo movie with Jason Momoa. I would be so fucking happy. You, I would single-handedly fund DC Media movie would become my joker i swear to god i want it i want it so bad I, I i want it i want it right now please james gunn r-rated jason momoa led lobo movie are you fucking kidding me I, i'm always the first to, to, to preach not getting hyped for movies that don't exist yet but oh my god that hype frame is right there and i have a fucking ticket ready and waiting i swear to god and I'll also get on that train, but you will be fucking behind me. I, I am fucking leading this goddamn train. I want this movie so bad. Still, I totally understand if this just ends up being a nothing burger. If this just ends up being James Gunn wanted to post a picture on a new website and, and Jason Momoa is just saying some stuff and it ends up being a totally different movie. Yeah, I'll totally understand. Will I be hilariously disappointed? Absolutely. Yes, I will. I will be very sad for a very long time, but I will understand. I will get it. I will understand. But I want it so fucking bad. Please, please, I'm begging you. That would be so fucking good. Just as a brief check-in before we start. I know I didn't post nearly as much as I usually do over the last week and a half, and I do have an explanation for that. My girlfriend was home while she was transferring between jobs, so I decided that that was a little bit more important than, than posting every day. She's at her new job now, she's loving it, it's great, so we're gonna be going back to our regularly scheduled programming now. The YouTube compilation for October is being made, it is just a little bit behind, I will have it out very soon, I promise. As for the spooky season special, that was gonna be the Halloween special, but see previous comment about girlfriend transferring jobs. It is being made, it is on the way. Now let's get to it. Welcome back to Regrettable Superhero of the Week, the weekly not weekly show where I pick one character out of the League of Regrettable Superheroes and then I run them the fuck down. Let's see who we are getting today. Day. There we go. Give me someone good. Give me someone good. Give me someone good. Ma Wait a minute, isn't that... That's a Batman villain! Wait a minute, didn't you talk about him? We've seen you already. What the fuck? The entire point of the wheel was to fix this fucking problem! We're just gonna... There we go. Alright. Round two. Who we getting? Who we getting? Who we getting? Who we getting? The... The Eye. The Eye! Also known as Detective Eye, apparently. Let's check it out. You know, with the amount of these that I've talked about, you think I wouldn't be surprised anymore, but, um... Yeah, this one got me. Is he just a fucking omnipotent eye? Just a biblically accurate detective? Fuck's sake, he even has an old-timey version of Be Not Afraid! Fuck you think you're looking at, Buster? Why is he so consistently mad? Oh, but don't worry, apparently this traveling black hole that has taken the form of an omnipotent human eye is apparently helped along by this doddering old man what I can only assume is his granddaughter. 
fuck do you need helpers for? You're a floating detective eye! Is it just because whatever you have in mind power you apparently lack in opposable thumbs? This dude's just a floating eyeball. That, that's literally all it is to it. Created by Frank Thomas in Keen Detective Funnies Volume 2, Number 12 of Centaur Publication in December of 1939, the eye is just a floating eye that solves crimes with a ridiculous number of powers, including flight, heat vision, teleportation, telekinesis, you know, just a whole bunch of fun stuff. He apparently operated like the Watcher, but then he like had had human agents go, go and arrest the criminals. So he's like, the, if the Watcher was a micromanager. <laughs> Eventually he got his own detective agency and went by Detective Eye. And in total, he lasted less than a dozen appearances. I don't... I, I don't know how this character would ever be used again, outside of it just being a Watcher ripoff. So if you read his dialogue, he is hilariously unhealthy. Copy down this message. Cable that message to your worthless successor. Both of you will board a ship for Kabul in the morning. I will give you further orders when you arrive. Appeared five seconds ago before disappearing again. Yeah, I... Regrettable. I've... Yeah, regrettable. How is he just a fucking eye? I never really felt a celebrity death before. Yeah, sorry if you came here for the jokes, this one's gonna be a pretty somber uh, video. Growing up, whenever a celebrity died, um, I was either separated enough from that celebrity's work or, or I just didn't know them that well that it, it never really affected me all that much. I never really listened to Prince when Prince passed. I, I was never really a big Harry Potter or, or Die Hard fan, so Alan Rickman didn't hit me that hard. I mean, even when Adam West passed away, um, that was just, it, it was a character that I love, but it was a part of the history. It wasn't my version of that character, so it didn't it didn't hit me all that all that hard when it happened. But um, but Kevin Conroy passed away this morning, and uh, that 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 one stings. I I get it now, and it hurts. For those of you who don't know, Kevin Conroy was the voice of Batman from Batman the Animated Series and the Arkham games. He is arguably the most distinct voice of Batman to ever play the character. And I know personally for me and so many others, he was Batman to us. He brought the character to life in a way that I have never seen replicated, and I doubt that I ever will, to be perfectly honest. Kevin Conroy really, really understood the character of Batman and the mythos of Batman and what Batman meant on such a deep and emotional level that he was really able to connect with every single type of Batman fan, whether it was a diehard that's been reading the comics since they were since they were nine or a, a person who just got into the show yesterday. He has left a mark on me and and so many others and he will be very very dearly missed I know that personally kevin conroy was is and always will be the definitive voice of batman he is one of the people that got me into the character and i don't think that i will ever be able to thank him enough his contributions to the lgbtqia plus community to the nerd community to the batman community to 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 so many can cannot be understated um and i don't think that i can give him the thanks that he deserves in the three minutes that i am allotted so i will simply say thank you kevin rest in peace you really helped a lot of people no no you are not my father i am not a disgrace i am vengeance I am the Knight. I am Batman! Alright, so last night I got the chance to go and see Black Panther Wakanda Forever. And I think I'm going to take a page out of Sir Superhero's book here because I'm going to do two reviews today. I'm going to do this one that's going to be my spoiler-free review. And then I'm going to do another video that's going to be my in-depth spoiler review. This, however, is the first one. This is my spoiler-free review of Black Panther Wakanda Forever. First story short, this, this is probably one of my favorite Marvel movies. It's certainly my favorite recent Marvel movie. And if you were at all on the fence about going to see it, go and fucking see it. It's really fucking good. People really don't know this because I really don't talk about it on my page that much, but I've always been a super big Namor fan. 
villains, I love anti-heroes, and he's always kind of toted the line between being a bad guy and a good guy. There's one of those motherfuckers out here begging for a Namor movie back when Namor was still owned by Universal. Trust me when I tell you that this movie does Namor so fucking right. Listen, he is not very comic accurate in terms of origins and in terms of how he is is treated within Atlantis or Talokan as it is called in, in this movie. The character, the way that he acts, the, the person that he is, is spot on. He has got to be one of the coldest motherfuckers I've ever seen in Marvel. I think that this movie kind of acts as a really good showcase that Comic accuracy does not always mean big screen success. Namor, Atlantis, at specific Atlanteans, hell, even his relationship with Atlantis is drastically different than it is in the comics. But it works, and it's good. This is a perfect version of what I like to call Marvel's adaptation strategy. Marvel usually doesn't adapt exactly what happened in the comics. Usually they want that end goal. They want what the character is in the comics at the end of it. But they switch up and change and manipulate everything in the back end to make it work within the universe they've created. And a lot of the times it works. It works really well. And this is definitely one of those times. I'm sorry. Obviously I'm a big Namor fan. It's what I've been talking about for most of this review. Time to get into the literal rest of the movie. This is a really, really good touching send off to Chadwick Boseman. And honestly, talks about a lot of the grief strategies that I'm sure a lot of the cast were feeling when this happened. There is a lot of themes of, of grief and how people deal with it and, and how those emotions affect how we make decisions in this movie. And I mean, it also just works as just a really good sequel to Black Panther and the consequences of the choices in those movies. Is it 100% perfect? No. But then again, no movie really is, is it? There are things I would change. There's story points that I don't exactly like, but I can't really talk about them without getting into spoilers. But for now, I'll just say there's a little bit of clunkiness here and there, and that's perfectly okay. It's acceptable. It's It doesn't ruin the movie. Honestly, I would probably rate the movie at a solid 8.5 out of 10. It's really fucking good, and it is absolutely worth your time. All right. That's all of my spoiler-free opinions. Go and watch the spoiler review if you if you want to know more. All right, so last night I got the chance to go and see Black Panther Wakanda Forever. And this is my spoiler review. So if you have not seen the movie, go do that. Or you know what? Even better, go and watch my spoiler-free review and then go do that. Main point is don't be here. I'm going to be talking spoilers here. This is your official spoiler warning. If you stay after this, it's your own goddamn fault. Are they gone? You are queen now? Bury your dead? Mourn your loss? Holy shit! You killed one of my people, so I'ma roll up in your fucking city, kill your queen, and give you a week to fix your fucking attitude! God damn, Namor was fucking cold in this movie! Sorry, I'm sorry, I fucking love Namor in this movie. I'm sorry, Namor, put some fucking respect on his dick. God damn. Okay, okay, personal opinions time. All right, goddamn. I thought a lot of the storytelling decisions in this movie were really fucking good. I thought a lot of the storytelling decisions in this movie made a lot of sense after thinking about it a little bit. It was a little touchy at first when like, Romanda removed the Koye from being the leader of the Doyle Melage, but then, after she kind of explained herself and was like, hey, remember when you sided with that guy that tried to fucking burn the goddamn world just because it was your job? Yeah, fuck off. Kind of made sense. I, I, I was on her side there. I will say I wasn't the biggest fan of like how the Midnight Angels were introduced. I know that the costumes are very comic book accurate and I did kind of like the suits. I liked how they looked, but honestly, I thought... They, they felt a little clunky being thrown in there. Same kind of goes for Ironheart's armor. I loved Riri. Riri was great. I can't wait for her fucking show. She is awesome. I just don't know about that armor specifically. It, fe it feels a little plasticky to me. It's just confusing because the stills of the armor looks fucking great. It's it's literally just seeing it in motion is a little bit weird. And only sometimes. It, if it's interacting with a real human, it looks great. Is that the only one that noticed how many times Wakandans like directly broke the American law that would definitely cause an international incident? Breaking Ross out of the van by literally fucking murking two dudes and stealing him? That, that can't be legal, right? That dude's a pretty big name in the CIA. That would make the news that he's going to prison and it would raise some questions when he didn't show up. Listen, I know that the president only wanted to start a war with Wakanda because they stole specifically Riri who could make weapons that could be used against the Wakandans, but Honestly, I feel like Ross would also start an incident like that. I don't know. I'm also not sure how I feel about T'Challa the second. Like it, but also it fe it feels kind of just like, oh, 
don't worry yeah he's gone but we have we have his replacement here i don't know i'm sure it means a, a lot to the cast to have have a continuation of chadwick boson's legacy in in the form of t'challa the second but i it feels it feels a little weird in terms of the story i don't hate it it just feels a little weird to me all right rant over i think that the movie's great i think it's really super cool i i really encourage everybody to watch it still an 8.5 title con rise wakanda forever the imperious rex all of that I'll see you guys in the next one <laughs> So I'm making lunch right now, so excuse me if I seem distracted, but I want to talk to you guys about something that I saw on TikTok. I saw one of those flipbook posts that was kind of an appreciation post for Boy Scout characters. Think like Superman, Captain America, that sort of character. The quote that opened it is something that I have heard a lot in, in being a comic book fan, and that's that Boy Scout characters are boring. That Superman is boring, because he's always going to pick the right option, and he's supremely powerful and can do anything, so why doesn't he? Characters like Captain America are boring because there's no there's no moral or ethical questions in their actions. They're always going to pick the answer that is the obvious right one. And as someone who used to subscribe to that mentality, I would like to debate the other side. Also, I'd just like to say the original post wasn't saying that these characters are boring. It was an appreciation post for them and it was sarcastically saying Boy Scout characters are boring. But that's just it. I... I don't think that they are anymore, specifically because of the reasons that people give as to why they are boring. I don't think Superman is boring because he will always try and pick the right choice. However, he exists in a world where sometimes there is no right choice. Sure, he'll always save the cat out of the tree, he'll always rescue somebody from jumping, he'll always stop the bank robbers, that, that's totally fair. Don't get me wrong, segments like that are still incredibly fun to see. I think that the real interest in Superman's character comes from all of the situations that he deals with that aren't as clear-cut as that. How does Superman deal with the bottled city of Kandor? What's the right option there? Does he let them free on Earth and just deal with the fact that there's an entire country of superhumans now? Does he find a planet for them out in the galaxy that they can now colonize? Is it his place to decide a planet's natural growth in, in comparison to Kandor? Because placing an entire city full of super advanced superheroes on a planet is absolutely going to change the course of that planet's evolution. Or even going to the next character, like Captain America. A lot of Captain America's issues are social issues. Like, yeah, there's always going to be the big bad that's obviously evil. Superman has that too. I mean, like, characters like Darkseid or Mongol aren't, aren't morally complex characters. Can Superman fights a big monster that's more powerful than him? Or Captain America fights someone who's so obviously evil that no one can deny it get boring? Yeah, a little bit. But that's exactly why every Superman story isn't Superman fights Mongol, and that's exactly why every Captain America story isn't Captain America fights the Red Skull. The interest in these characters, in these Boy Scout characters that will always be good, comes from the fact that the world they exist in is not. The interest in these characters come from the fact that sometimes, morally gray questions need to be asked, and characters like Superman and Captain America need to find a way through that world. The interest comes from the fact that they are truly and deeply good to their core, and the world they exist in is not. Get a Superman story every now and again. Maybe it'll give you hope in a better future. You'll excuse me. I'm going to go and enjoy my lunch. So I was on stream for two hours, and that entire two hours while I was talking, I was doing my nails. They needed to be repainted. I had nail polish, whatever, let's do it. I get them all done. I get off the stream. And because I'm a fucking idiot, I go to make something to eat and immediately, immediately fuck up my nails. My nails are hastily fucking clean. I have one, one gold pinky that, that has not been, that has not been mutilated yet. And I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna film a regrettable superhero while this sets in. Yeah. Welcome back to Regrettable Superhero of the Week, the weekly not weekly show where I pick one character out random out of the league of regrettable superheroes and then I run the fuck down. Let's see who we're getting today. We already got you, god damn! I've apparently been hitting close instead of remove a good couple of times, so... Apparently we're back to the same fucking problem! One more time, come on! Give me someone good. Give me someone good! Nature boy? Nature boy? Sounds like if somebody made a superhero name by throwing darts at a fucking dartboard. I mean, I guess Batman or Beast Boy or Spider-Man isn't exactly any better. What? What is going on here? What does this have anything to do with Nate? This is a catchphrase just a fucking rip off of Beyblade. Oh, God damn it. Hi, Jerry Siegel. I was wondering where you went. Where? His name has popped up like three or four times in this goddamn book. So you can't sneak it past me. That's just a picture of Superman. He's even got the spit curl. And where are your pants? Hi, 
it's been several hours. I went and ran chores, but I'm back. Let's actually read this guy's description. Yeah, this dude is just Jerry Siegel's version of Captain Planet. More specifically, if he combined Captain Marvel and Captain Planet, let me explain. Nature Boy's real name is David Crandall. He was created by Jerry Siegel and Joe Buscema in Nature Boy Comics number three of Charlton Comics in March of 1956. How the fuck you debut in your third issue of your own comic? Anyway, David's dad thought it was a great idea for one day to fly David as a baby and his mother over the ocean on a fucking stormy day. I will give you three chances to guess what happened. Of course they fucked. Crashed. Of course they fucking crashed. Well, David's parents were rescued. David apparently disappeared. Yes, this comic opens with apparently a baby drowning. <laughs> this video is getting shadow banned. But apparently not. Apparently under the water, a bunch of gods were just hanging out because of course they were. And taking pity on the poor baby, adopted him and dropped him back off at his parents' home. Later down the line, he would transform into Nature Boy, which he only transformed into after saying his magic words of letter rip. This man, a half-ass catchphrase gets you a half-ass costume. What, what, what can I say? The particular downside that he needs to ask the god in charge of each power to give him the weapon of that power. So if he needs to use a lightning bolt, he needs to ask the god that controls the lightning bolts to give him a lightning bolt. And you know, to be honest, this is not a bad idea for a character. I can see this being used effectively. Look at Captain Planet. For fuck's sake, Nature Boy even has the power of heart as well. So you know what? Not regrettable. You can do a lot with this. Uh, hold, holy shit. Oh my god, holy shit. Don't realize I haven't posted in five fucking days, right? See that that I was I was just recording a video making fun of the fact that I that I was almost at a million and I haven't recorded in five days. And then I come back and I get a text from Sir Superhero saying, Congrats! So, so holy shit! I I didn't think this was gonna happen. I didn't think that, that was possible. Um Oh my god. I've said it a million times, but when, when I started this page, it was just because I was I was bored and I wanted to make jokes in, in my dorm room to make myself happy because I was bored at college and... Holy shit! You guys are the absolute best. I love every single one of you. I did not think that this was ever going to happen and the fact that it has is absolutely fucking baffling to me. I am going to be riding a high for the rest of the fucking week. Holy shit! In all absolute seriousness, um, none of this is possible without all of you guys. Um, and I cannot thank every single one of my followers enough. Uh, oh, oh my God. Uh, I didn't think that this was ever going to be possible. And the fact that it is, is, is crazy. I, I love being here. I love doing this. I love all of you guys. I love that this gets to be my job. I love that every, every single thing that has happened because of this is amazing. And oh my God, thank you all. Here's to a million. I guess now I gotta follow through on putting that white streak in my hair. And doing a full dramatic bit with it. And doing a full cosplay with it. I obviously did not think this was gonna happen. I didn't think this through. Oh boy. Love you all. Thank you so much. Holy shit. Fucking day it is? No, not particularly. I suspected not, cause you haven't made a video in five fucking days, man. I mean, it was thanks. It was Thanksgiving, and like people I knew were off, so I, I, I didn't think it was that important. Is this like your fucking job? I mean, I mean, like, yeah, yeah, technically. You know you're like fifty people away from a million, right? I'm fucking what? Yes, I am indeed, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not dead. I would actually like to talk about something that I talked about during my stream today. By the way, I stream over on the Purple app I'm not allowed to talk about. Go check me out, Mondays and Wednesdays. But he brought up a point about Jason Todd hating Tim Drake because Tim Drake is a replacement. And that gets brought up sometimes in like fan fiction and fan circles that Tim Drake is Jason Todd's replacement. And because of that, Jason Todd feels a certain level of resentment towards him. I'd like to talk about that a little bit further because I personally don't think that's even remotely the case. I think that Jason Todd does have some issues with Tim Drake, but I don't think it's anything about Tim specifically. I think that all of Jason's problems with Tim spawn from his issues with Batman. 
that a lot of these issues stem from the fact that a lot of people think that Jason Todd's problem with Batman is that he hates Batman or that he wants to kill Batman. And that's really not the case. They just have two different outlooks on how to stop crime. It's just that Jason's outlook directly puts him in conflict with Bruce's outlook. But how does this relate to Tim Drake? Let me tell you. Jason Todd saw how he was treated in a member of Batman's war. Batman's way of handling crime directly led to his death. He sees Batman's Robins as soldiers because that's what Batman referred to him as a lot. Jason has a deep personal problem with people who abuse children. He doesn't hate Tim Drake because Tim Drake is his replacement and therefore is getting what he did not want. He does not resent him for getting the love from Bruce that he did not get. He hates Tim Drake because Tim Drake existing means that Batman learned nothing. It means that Batman consciously took another child and put him in the role that directly led to Jason's death. The first time that Jason fights Tim after Under the Red Hood, he continues to bring up how fucked up what he's doing is. No one should have to do this. Bruce is wrong for making you do this. He's Bruce using a child soldier to fight crime and decides I'm gonna be the reason this kid fucking quits. For his own safety, I have to be the bad guy. It's not about him hating Tim. It's about him hating what Tim represents. Thank you for coming to my red talk. All right, please excuse the terrible lighting. I am in my car and it gets dark outside at like 4.30 right now. I was just scrolling through Twitter and 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 and, and I, saw, I saw a thing. I saw a thing. Specifically, th this this thing right here, right here. For those of you who don't know, that that's the cover of, uh, of Kingdom Come. Kingdom Come has uh, been my favorite comic book of all time since I read it, when I was probably way too young to do that. Kingdom Come is, I would debate, one of the best DC stories ever told. To take nothing else from this video, take that you should go and read Kingdom Come. It's beautiful art by Alex Ross, it's written by Mark Wade, which that has like my favorite writer and favorite artist, making one of the best stories I've ever read. Go read Kingdom Come. However, James Gunn tweeted that out. And James Gunn has been tweeting some cryptic fucking shit regarding DC stuff that DC Entertainment is going to be making, including pictures of Mr. Terrific and Lobo. Now those two movies, I'm super fucking excited for those two movies. Jason Momoa Lobo, please God. However, I am just, I'm just making this one video because I felt like I had to, because I feel like I have an obligation to say. The love of all that is holy, please God, don't make a Kingdom Come movie. Kingdom Come is a story that very, very solely works as a comic book story. It cannot be adapted without being heavily altered. Everything I say next will have slight spoilers for Kingdom Come, so if you haven't read it, which you should, don't watch the rest of it. Just take away that I, I really don't want a Kingdom Come movie to be made and I have my reasons. Okay, okay, are they gone? Are they gone? Kingdom Come as a story is a response to 90s comics. One of the main villains of the story is directly drawn to be inspired and be a parody of Rob Liefeld characters. The entire story of Kingdom Come hinges on the fact that the new generation of superheroes is too violent, too scary, too obsessed with guns, and not at all involved in helping people at all, to the fact that they have basically become villains. And the older generation of superheroes comes back to put a stop to them. And they go way over the fucking top and end up starting a war comic is a direct response to the 90s making superheroes dark and gritty. It is a direct response to the emergence of anti-heroes and about how corrupting superheroes is not a good thing. And the more that I talk about this, the more it kind of makes sense if they wanted to make a Kingdom Come movie and just reframed it so that it's talking about superhero movies instead of 90s comics. God damn it! I had a point! There was a point to this! But if they reframed it to be about how modern superhero movies make superheroes either dark and gritty or stooges of the government, it could really fucking work in the same kind of way. But that also relies on the fact that there was a prior generation where they didn't do that. Well, sure, I had a point! I'm conflicted! Why am I conflicted?! I still don't want this movie. I'm curious now instead of instead of angry, but I still I still don't think I want this movie. Maybe. But said, please don't make a Kingdom Come movie. You do at least bring Mark Wade in to supervise. <sighs> what the Uh Hi? <laughs> ah! Ah! Fuck, man, what the hell? Stop fucking disappearing for multiple days at a time! What the fuck are you even talking about? Oh my god, I think you knocked a tooth loose. What the fuck am I talking about? Let me make the timeline of events crystal fucking clear for you. After five days of not posting, you inch 
inch your way over a million. Make one video and a single ad, and then you disappear for another five fucking days! That's not fair! I don't post on weekends! People know I don't post on weekends! It's Wednesday! We have had a lot of shit going on, okay? Oh, absolutely, my mistake. I totally forgot to take into account the super busy schedule of a fucking unemployed content creator! You can't say unemployed and then a job title and still have your point make sense! Oh, oh, so this is your job? Okay, great. Where's the YouTube video? Uh You know, I'm not even counting the YouTube compilation. Where's that YouTube video that you promised that you were going to make, like, three months ago? Did you stream this week? Was it at least for a good reason? I was playing control all day. No! The, the, the answer is no! I was having a well-deserved rest day! Job requires you to stream twice a week and make one three-minute video every day! That does not require rest day! Die! I also technically have to make sponsored videos that I haven't done yet. ...are not helping your case! I've been renovating a house for the last week! What? What? Me and my girlfriend are moving soon and the house was in disrepair so I've been renovating the house for the last week. You make enough money to buy a house? No, we're renting. It's just through like a family setup. Oh, oh, okay. So like they're cool. They're cool with us making like renovations and stuff, and it's gonna make the house look better. Oh damn, you're lucky. That's a nice. That's a nice setup. Yeah, no, right. It's super cool. And then we have like a yard for the boys and everything. No, yeah, that's super cool. I'm proud of you. That's awesome. Yeah, thank you, thank you. This makes all the the yelling kind of awkward, then, doesn't? It? Yeah, just a just just a touch. You still have to do like your job though during the day. Yeah, no, I I, I know. I got I gotta go up and do that do that today. Okay, okay, good. Just one minute. To make sure. Yeah, yeah, no, that's that's good. That's good. I'm gonna I'm gonna go do that actually. Oh yeah, no, go yeah, go 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 do that. Do yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. awesome. Oh hey, just one one thing before you go. Uh, yeah, what's up? You really gotta stop talking to yourself like this. It's really not healthy. What are you talking to? Yeah, I I I need another rest day. God damn. Hi. Insert joke about me disappearing. Again, I do apologize for my constant disappearances. I'm on the last leg of a journey of moving it. It takes some time. However, today I have a gift for you guys. Today's the day I fulfill a promise. Specifically, today's the day I fulfill this promise. <laughs> Top part, not the bottom part. I don't have the ability to film a really long fucking dramatic skit right now. But I do have time to go and get my hair cut because I'm looking very shaggy and it's time. So you guys are going to accompany me while I do that. It is only just now occurring to me that I am going to have a white stripe for Christmas. Probably for a couple of months. I did not think this through. Why did I let you guys convince me to do this? That's a lie. I wrote the tweet. I, I, I'm the one who's responsible for this. All right. Here we fucking go. Sides have been cut. We are getting there. They're going to cut the top after they dye me. But uh, this is the last time we're going to see my hair all one color. So soak it in. To say I am nervous is an understatement, but this is I, this is gonna look cool. Trust the process. I'm the definition of sex appeal right now. There's enough tin foil on my head that it could deflect a bullet. Yeah, I can't hear my thoughts anymore. You know what? I think I'm gonna make you guys wait to see what it actually turns out looking like. So I will see you guys after this is done. Hopefully this turns out good. See you soon. All right, I'm officially out. I'm gonna tell you what. I don't hate it. It is gonna take a while to get used to the three different hair colors that I have now. I look like a different person. I'm not, this looks so strange to me. Thank you all on a million. I cannot believe that we actually made it. I'll probably put a vote soon out on my Twitter of what scene people want me to reenact now that I have the hair. Yeah, let's make it to two. Make it to two million, I'll get blown up in a warehouse or something. I, I don't fucking know. All right. I'll see you guys in the next one. God, this is fucking weird. Okay, so if it makes you guys feel any better, fuck me, it is cold. Holy shit. Okay, I'm warmer and in a different location. I needed to run the car to get the heater to run, but whatever, it doesn't matter. So in my seemingly infinite process of moving into a new house, I have not only neglected posting more, but also neglected the fact that, um, that like Christmas exists. <laughs> Christmas is Sunday. It is Thursday right now. And I have shopped for mm, my girlfriend almost exclusively. I know my family watches these videos. So, uh, 
Hi guys, I, I didn't neglect you. What I just I got I got locked in on, on one thing. I'm sorry. So today is going to be my last second. Holy shit, I remember I have a family that I need to shop for Christmas shopping day. And y'all are going to accompany me. So like I was saying in the beginning, if it makes you feel any better, you guys are not the only ones I have neglected. I'm also not gonna be able to show you guys what I actually get for the aforementioned reason that my family watches these videos, so. I think the most disturbing part here is that that's roughly the size that that Grogu actually is for the giant head. It's it's really skeezing me out, man. Listen, I'm just as big of a Spider-Man fan as the next guy, but um, I don't, I don't know if I would have that on my wall. I'm not even sure this video is going to stay up because that's in it. Jesus God. Well, that just seems illegal. I'm currently in a back and forth with Scarlett right now because she's very particular about stockings and, and we don't have stockings for ourselves yet. <laughs> so um, there are uh, just a few, just a few options here. However, she has a real job, so she's at work and I have to send her pictures and wait for her to, you know, get brief fleeting moments of time so that we can pick some out. I've been pacing this aisle for 10 minutes now. It, it's, it's not looking good. <laughs> he sees you when you're sleeping and so do I. All right. All of the gift from one store completed, on to the next one. Thank God I have a hybrid or I would be fucked right now. Oh, and in case you were wondering, no, me and Scarlett did not pick out stockings. I have spent so much fucking money and I still have like five people I need to buy presents for. Is this what being an adult is like? Fuck this, I hate this shit. Why can't I be one of those guys that gets people shit that they don't actually fucking want? That would make my life so much easier. No, I had to be raised to be considerate and actually give a fuck. God damn it. I have been walking around this outlet mall for two hours now. I have lost all of the feeling in my fingers, both my ears are screaming at me, and I'm pretty sure my nose fell off 15 minutes ago. And I still have three people I need to buy presents for. Mother Car Panda has been activated because I care about heat more than I care about audio quality. I still have so many people to shop for. I started at 11 and it is nearly 3. It's about to get real bah humbug up in this bitch! Merry Christmas everybody, happy holidays, um, I'll see y'all in the next one. Why is it so cold? I was not going to respond to this, but now I have to because I was watching it again and I think it could be a good conversation piece. So here's the thing about hardcore comic book readers that I think we need to know is that they judge comic book movies based off of years and years and years of comic books that they've read. And if you watch that video, you'll know how he said it's a mid Batman film. I also have to jump in on this bit. Sorry for screen recording the uh, the, the video Straw Hat. The, the stitches were off and I really need to talk about this. So Straw Hat mentions a point that comic book readers judge comic book movies based on years and years of comic book knowledge and that is what forms their opinion on comic book movies. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll give that to them. That's pretty much correct. I don't like Titans because my years and years of experience with the characters that are in Titans. Part of the reason that I like Into the Spider-Verse so much is because of my years and years of experience with the characters in Into the Spider-Verse. And I'm not disagreeing with Straw Hat. I'm still disagreeing with Eris Quinones, which is very hard for me. I've been a huge comic story and fan for de fucking decades. But even evaluated on the standards of a Batman comic book fan, the Batman is really fucking good. It really, really understands the mentality of year two Batman, where Batman doesn't really know what he's doing. He is just this perfectly honed weapon. He doesn't really have a, a purpose yet. The Batman who went into this expecting vengeance and only vengeance. Batman is not a mid-Batman film. Batman is a really, really, really good film and a really, really good Batman film. Are there things that are not perfect? Of course there are. There's always things that are not perfect. But I would argue if there's any movie that is a mid-Batman movie but a good movie, it would be all the Dark Knight trilogy. I've told all of my friends for years, it's pretty obvious Christopher Nolan does not like Batman. Those movies are really great movies. They're really great films. However, they don't really understand who Batman is. Do you realize that Batman attempts to quit being Batman in every single Dark Knight movie? While comic book Batman has to literally be either killed, crippled, or break his moral code to do that in the comics? How the relationship with his rogues aren't really addressed in the same way that they are in any other Batman comic? Batman relationship to children isn't really addressed in any of those fucking movies even though Robin's been an essential part of his character since Batman number fucking one all of which are points that are addressed in the Batman the Batman understands Batman as a detective the Batman understands Batman as a person the Batman understands Batman's relationship with Commissioner Gordon with Catwoman with the Riddler hell thanks to that deleted scene with the Joker all of which is done while also being a really fucking good movie that's impressive. That's really impressive to know the Batman is not mid on either a movie level or a Batman movie level. All right. 
This is it. Move out is complete. That thing that has been taking up so much of my time has finally come to a close. And how thematic that it's exactly on the new year. I have big, big plans for 2023, which I know is saying a lot, seeing as I've been gone for like a week and a half consistently for like a month, but I promise I do. This year has been crazy. I finally crossed a million. I graduated. I finally started doing this full time. And now I'm living with someone who I love with all of my heart. I cannot wait for the rest of this new year and I cannot wait to experience it all with you guys. Thank you all for sticking with me. I'm sorry if it takes a little bit more time to get started, but I promise you, I have a lot of plans for the new year. Thank you all for your dedication. Happy New Year, everybody. So I had one hot take video that I was going to do that was going to include a couple of different things. And then I actually filmed it and, and it was three minutes and only had two topics. So you guys are just going to get a couple of videos today of, uh, of, of this series because I have like two appliances and a dump run and then I'm done with the rest of the house and I need to stave off the starving masses for content. So here we fucking go. Welcome to my new brief series. Pandas, I swear to God, I'm almost done with the house. Here's some videos to stave you off until I have a fucking computer. Hot takes! Part one, Hal Jordan. So I've been very open about the fact that the Green Lanterns just don't really do it for me. Never been a big space cop guy. Shit, even on the Marvel side. Never really been a fan of the Nova Corps. Space cops just don't tickle my fancy. I don't know what to tell you. I've also been very open about the fact that I think Hal Jordan's a piece of shit. If I went into all the reasons that I don't really like Hal Jordan, we would be here for an entire fucking YouTube video, and I don't want that to be my first non-compilation YouTube video. So, we'll just say that I don't really like the guy. Not my, not my style. With all of that said, I do still have opinions on how I think he should be characterized. Starting with the fact that out of the, like, four to seven mainline human Green Lanterns that we have had, Hal Jordan was not only the first, but therefore is the oldest. The core needed to get okay with having a human on the Green Lantern Corps, and then they started to induct more. That takes some fucking time. Hal Jordan should be like an older guy. And hell, for a good portion of his publication history, he was. Hell, before he got resurrected from the dead after being killed for, you know, murdering a whole bunch of his friends, Parallax being a giant space bug was a cop out, fight me. He had white stripes in his hair for a while. White stripes that I personally think that they should give him back. Purely in terms of age, if the Green Lanterns are the G.I. Joes, then Hal Jordan would be like Flint. Really breaking out the big name references for your comeback, eh, Panda? Here's an example. Recently, I was reading the Human Target series by Tom King and Greg Smallwood, and they have a Hal Jordan cameo like halfway through, and I think he looks great. Yes, I know he does not have the fancy little white stripes just fucking hang with me. But I mean, like, look at him. That's an obviously older guy. He's got wrinkles. He's seen some fucking years. This is a grizzled old space cop who has seen way too much shit and just has been around the block at this point. As Hal Jordan should be. He was the first human Green Lantern and has escalated to the greatest Green Lantern of of all time. That does not happen in five years. You can still give him a sort of cocky swagger to his attitude and have him be an older guy. I mean, shit, you can just have him act like Nathan Fillion and you have it down. Just sort of a cocky swagger on an older dude. That works. And before anybody comes for me, yes, this holds for Batman as well. The man has like a minimum of two adult children and he adopted the first one in his early 20s. That is a middle-aged man. I don't know. Those are my opinions. Let me know yours in the comments. All right. We have moved from the bed to the desk. I've put on a, a better shirt. My hair is still a mess. And now I have a Bluetooth microphone, courtesy of Scarlett's parents. Thank you and Merry Christmas. I also got coffee because it is necessary for my survival. Welcome back to that series with a name so long uh, that I don't want to say it again. So go back and watch the part one if you want to know what it's I'm talking hot takes, so let, let's let's get into the hot take. Comic book hot take number two. The cold. I'm probably gonna lose some fans for this one. I'm probably gonna lose some fans for this one. So you you need you need to stick with me. You need to hear me the fuck. I would like to remind everybody that I have an animation major, so please hear me out on this one. You don't want this animated series. You don't. You don't actually want this animated series. Let me tell you exactly why you don't want this animated series. For those of you who don't know, this is the art of Gabriel Picard. They have made a lot of art in this very style for the Teen Titans. It's really good. It is amazing. I love this art. So do quite a lot of people. To the point that I have seen people say that they want an animated Teen Titans show in this style. Hell, I think I've probably responded to a comment or two of that, agreeing that I would want an animated series in this style, until I thought about it a little bit more. Animation, especially animation adaptations, is a process of simplification. 
You take a pre-established art style, one that usually has a fair amount of detail, and you simplify it down to the point where it's still recognizable, but now those characters can move and you don't need to worry about that superfluous detail. For one example, here is a panel from All-Star Superman drawn by Frank Whiteley. And here is that same scene in the animated movie that a fair amount of detail needed to be reduced to the animated version. And the style was altered slightly. The shadows are less dynamic. The highlights are less brief. There's a lot less lines in the face. There's a lot less lines in the costume. An animated adaptation will not have the exact same art style as the art that it is based on. And absolutely, you can hand off this animated series to, like, an anime hat. A lot of anime is very faithful to the art style of the manga that they come from. But there is still no guarantee it's going to turn out the same way that the original art looks like. Which, might I remind you, is very detailed, stylized, and pose heavy. It would take a lot of fucking work to get this to work in animation. And that's not even addressing my second point, which is this would be a fucking CW show! This sort of dark style, nighttime heavy, blue light filter heavy, slice of life, superheroes when they're not superhero style show. This is Riverdale if it was Teen Titan. Don't mistake me, I like slice of life superheroes. Half of my content is slice of life superhero. But this feels like it's really skirting close to the Riverdale line. And I don't want another Riverdale. Especially not with the work it would take to get this art style correct. I don't know, that's just my opinion. Let me know yours in the comments. I still love this art. I love this stuff. I think it's great. Just please don't make it a show. You know the weirdest part about moving out? Ironically enough, it's that you never plan on the moving out when you're moving in. I know that seems like a no shit panda sort of moment, but let, let me kind of explain. Right now, I am cleaning out my, uh, my studio space that I set up not not too long ago and it's not for any bad reason me, me and me and scarlet just got a house that we, that we're living in and i'm moving into there so i can officially move in with my girlfriend and it's it's an amazing experience and i don't regret it for a second it's just very it's a very strange experience moving and removing the things that you didn't think you were going to have to move or remove for a very long time hell it was only a few months ago that i spent so much time setting this place up and now and now I'm moving on to the next next adventure already it's such it's such a strange emotional experience like did I always understand that I was going to be packing this place up eventually and moving away from from this setup eventually of course I did the plan was never to stay here forever the plan was never to have this setup forever but it is still such a surreal experience to take down all of this knowingly putting myself in a place that is smaller Knowing that I will be setting all of this back up in a place where I don't have as many luxuries. Where this space as it exists now will not be able to exist. But when you think about it, that's kind of the point of moving out, isn't it? It's taking a massive leap backward and off of the path that you spent so much time setting up for yourself simply so that you can find your own path to walk on. And looking out at it, sure, it's terrifying to begin with. You have zero idea where this path may lead. You might not even be sure if you've made the right decision. Yet you walk it anyway because this is your choice. When I set this studio space up, I... I was a totally different person, for lack of a better term. I had no idea where I was gonna go or when I was gonna go there. But at the time, this was a part of that journey. Even taking it down now, I have no regrets about setting this space up the way that I did. This is what I needed when I put it together. And would it still be useful in this next stage of my life? Sure. But I know that this space is not my primary need anymore. I have things I'm moving forward to. I have people I'm moving forward with. On my list of needs, this space has significantly dropped in number. And you know what? I'm okay with that. I'm excited to start this new stage of my life, regardless of the space that it confines me to. And if that means making my content in, in the corner of a kitchen or, or a work shed, then so be it. That's what it is. I love what I do. And I'm happy where I'm going. So don't be scared of the next step. Sometimes you don't need to know where the finish line is to know that you're running the right race. And now that I've gotten all faux philosophical on your asses, I need to get back to work. Have an amazing day. I'll see you in the next one. So those of you who have been on my page for a while have probably realized that I've taken a bit of, um, let's call it a hiatus. For like the past couple of months, I've only been posting one video every five or six days. People who have been paying attention to those videos know that that is because I've been moving and renovating a house. God, I hate this fucking state of weather. I've also not been able to access my computer, so streaming's been basically a no-show. In short, 
Shit's been fucked. But luckily, I'm almost done now. In fact, I'm finishing today. I have so much planned for the new year, and I cannot wait for you guys to be a part of them. So I'm sorry for how long it's taken, but with all that said, and apologies given, let's get back to work, shall we? And that is going to be it for this... I, I don't think I can say month anymore because it's been two. I just want to take a moment to thank all of my beautiful, wonderful, lovely, patient patrons before getting into the ending comments. So thank you, Amanda Barnstead, Andra Lanowitz, Anna Liza B, Background Joshua, Benjamin Hadler, Bill Bro, Brandon Laney, Carol Cowett, Danny Walker, Dark Nimbus, Diandra, Dragon Fang, Fuck Me Ray Bradbury, Fireball Sensei, Gas Boss Gate Light Girl Keep, Jacob Safel, Jeffrey of Isles, Cat Q, Lil Fireball, Magu, Nixie Shimo, Pandora A, Pinchy Mugre, Raymond Villasana, Ricky Tiki Davi, Sandra Wallace, Tangled Web, Tarara, The Holy Kuroda, T.S. Famder, and Wofu Badge 2, as well as all of my other lovely, wonderful, patient patrons. And if you would also like your name read out in the comments of all future videos that I promise are coming now, then hop over to Patreon and donate $15 or more. Even donating a dollar helps. Honestly, the only way that I am able to continue doing this even after my extended hiatuses is through the support of lovely, lovely patrons like yourselves. So thank you all so much. I promise that I am finally, finally moved in. I have my computer set up. I have everything ready that I can actually start making content for you guys, which I promise I have a really good plan going forward and I cannot wait for you guys to be a part of it. I will say that my Patreon does play a decently large role in that plan going forward. So if you want to be a part of these ongoing plans, head on over to my Patreon and get signed up. Thank you all for your continued patience. I know that it has taken me forever just to get this out and I apologize very deeply for that. But honestly, I'm finally moved in. Your guys' support has made this actually possible to do and I thank you so much for that. And I cannot wait to show you guys what I've been working on, to show you guys everything that I have the capability to do in the new year. So thank you all for sticking around. Thank you all for still watching and I will see you next time.